Does anyone remember Chicken Little? That adorably naive chick who believed that the sky was falling. Chicken Little runs off to tell the king this terrible news and along the way finds many companions, all of who go into hysterics because they now too believe that the sky is falling. It's Lucy Goosey and Lucky Ducky and all these things. Of course, what the reader knows that these uh, birds do not is that the world is not in fact ending the way that Chicken Little thinks it is. The sky is not falling. It was just a simple acorn that fell atop the head. The general moral of the story is to not believe everything that you read or hear, particularly of if it is of the more outlandish nature. That fable popped into my head, particularly as I read the Old Testament reading for this morning, the reading from Daniel. Here we have three verses that sound very much like the sky is falling. Uh, my Bible actually has a great caption right above our passage. In big, bold letters, it says, The End Times. Sounds very ominous, doesn't it? I wonder, when we hear these words from Daniel and from Jesus today, I wonder if we are tempted to read them like Chicken Little. We hear the words, and we notice the cry from some crazy Old Testament prophet, and we decide that it is just an exaggeration. The world is not ending. The sky is not falling. There is nothing that we need to be worried about. It can easily be explained away. Except, except for the fact that the Bible is not a fairy tale. And while it is true, the sky is not falling around us. The scriptures do point us to a reality that we would do well to remember. That there is a day when creation moves to its culmination. When the kingdom of God will reign supreme and this world as we know it will draw to a close. As Christians, when we read passages about destruction and wars upon wars and kingdom against kingdom, how do we hear this message? What does this mean for our Christian life? Whether we think of the end of the world, that it's nothing more than childhood fables, or we equate it with red-faced evangelists who are strong in judgment but thin in intelligence, it is easy for us to downplay this idea. Which, of course, fits very well into kind of the contemporary ethos of this world. We don't have to plan. We don't have to worry about the future. All that matters is our enjoyment here and now. Because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Right? If it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. Scripture, though, never speaks that way. Reading from Daniel, Daniel begins, At that time, there is an appointed time, known only to God. At that time, Michael, the great prince, who protects your people, will arise. And there will be times of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. Jesus echoes this. Right? The disciples ask about what the sign will be that his kingdom is about to be fulfilled, and Jesus points to this distress. Wars and upheaval, nation will rise against nation, kingdom will fight against kingdom. These are the beginning of the birth pains, he says. It's easy to downplay this. And yet, then, when we watch the news, particularly what has just happened, these passages stand in stark reality. In many ways, we are living in very much the times that Jesus described. This is why our understanding of what is kind of termed the end times uh, is important for us. Because it pronounces for us how God's creation is moving towards its fulfillment. 
It shows us, in many ways, that the hurt, the heartache, the pain, the evil in this world is not God's intention for which God has created. We need to remember that. It may seem scary to read scriptures that talk about times of distress, nations warring against nations, earthquakes and famines, and it is scary and it is dark. But this does not mean that the world is just going to hell in a handbasket. In fact, as faithful people, we recognize the opposite. It doesn't mean that things are just going to get worse and worse and that there is no stopping it until we end up annihilating ourselves. See, that's what we are left with if we do not believe in the second coming. If we do not believe that there will be a day once again where God enters into the tapestry of our world to right all the wrongs and to thwart the powers of evil. We affirm that as part of our creed. Right? We affirm the second coming. Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead. And sometimes we hold this up, or other people hold this up, as a fearful doctrine. That this is the time of dark judgment. This is the time when Christ will don his police badge and issue tickets to the world. And everybody will move to their condemnation. It's actually a hopeful doctrine. Because believing in the second coming believe, is meaning believing that the world... Um, will be made right. That evil does not get the last word. That all things will eventually be placed under the rule of God. And it is in that reality that we have hope. Hebrews says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. Because he who promised is faithful. We embrace that hope in our lives. That hope that one day everything will be made right. And everything will be gathered under God's kingdom. Daniel writes of the end, verse 1, At that time, everybody whose name is written in the book, that means the book of life, God's record of the faithful, will be delivered. A reading ends, verse 3, We who are wise, meaning those who turn to God and submit ourselves to God's rule, we will shine like the brightness of the heavens. We look at things in life from an eternal perspective. We allow ourselves to be comforted by the fact that when all is said and done, we will enjoy the brilliant blessings of God's kingdom for all eternity. And we hold on to that reality. We hold on to that promise because Jesus promised it again and again and again and again. The world can throw evil upon evil at us. The world can hurt us in a myriad of different ways, but that will never take away the final victory of God, a victory that we participate in, in faith. Now we can look at these things. We can look at the fact that Jesus talked about uh, the events in some sense that we're seeing, and we don't necessarily say that okay we hold a bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other and you know it's it's not about that but jesus described these things and we can look at that and we can also look at the fact that well we recognize that the world is moving to a full a full culmination in in christ that until that day we are still in need of redemption that we are